Today we are at Ha Ha Tonka State Park and there are a lot of trails here that lead to ruins. Look, right behind me is a castle. There's also a carriage house, a water tower, a natural bridge, a sinkhole, a spring. So much to do here and it's all outside so we're gonna have an outside adventure today. So I'm gonna stop talking and let's go check this out. This, this looks really good. This park is full of trails. I think there are like 17 in total. There may be more. And we parked here at Natural Bridge and we made our way down to the Coliseum, which is a huge sinkhole. We then walked over to the spring and had to take a million stairs down and back up. We then followed the trail to the water tower and finally to the castle ruins and some amazing views. Ha Ha Tonka State Park is located just outside of Camdenton, Missouri, and it is a beautiful spring day. You couldn't ask for a better day, and this park is a perfect place for a hike. This is much bigger than uh, what it looks in the pictures on the internet. This landscape is called karst topography, and it's the result of water eroding the bedrock, and it's characterized by caves, sinkholes, springs, and natural bridges. Oh, this is kind of cool, isn't it? You're going to see and hear me talk to my better half, Greg. I drag him with me on these adventures, and he tries to keep me out of trouble. And I tease him, and I call him my driver. Now, this place is impressive, isn't it? Well, you didn't come with us when we went to Mantle Rock in Kentucky. And that was kind of cool. Like It was kind of like this. But nothing... Nothing as fantastic as this. This natural bridge is 70 feet wide. It spans 60 feet and it's 100 feet in the air. This bridge and the sinkhole that we're in were once part of a cave system that collapsed. That is just... It is really kind of cool. We're going to get to go up top there. So this is the sinkhole. Hmm. Yeah. That's what we're in. We're in the middle of the sinkhole. Yeah, you can definitely see. Do you not see? Like, just look all around. We are in this sinkhole. I think the sinkhole is 150 feet deep. Is what I read. The Colosseum is 500 feet long, 300 feet wide, and legend tells of it being used for tribal meetings and church revivals. And many of the area caves were used by counterfeiters and bandits. And that was pretty smart because if you wanted to hide, I think this would be the place to do it. It does. Look, you have two options. You have stairs or just a little dirt path. Has the wheelchair path. Is it? Okay, well, I'm taking these. Whoa, they are very unsteady. <laughs> oh, snake. Oh, I just missed. Oh, there he is. There he is. Snake. It's like Indiana Jones in the Temple of Doom. We have to be careful of all the booby traps. I think this is what we're going to see a lot here are boulders and cool rock formations. Hmm. Why do we go? <laughs> yes, it's a dilemma. Really, which way do we go? Oh, wait a minute. I think we go this way because it's marked yellow. We have a yellow trail marker. We did pick the correct trail, but it ended up being just as treacherous as the other one. But it was well worth the effort because once we climbed out of the sinkhole, we were rewarded with our first peak of the castle ruins. The spring itself is closed for repairs, but there was a way to get close. Wow. Unfortunately, getting there involved going down and up nearly 250 feet. See, I'm okay with going down these stairs, but but coming up, I'm gonna have a really, really difficult time. 
Oh wow, look at this. <coughs> yeah, look, there's the the lake or the spring is down there. This would be an excellent place to come camping. You could spend three or four days here just exploring all of these trails, all of these little nooks and crannies. This place is truly amazing. Wow. So the one big question that I had coming down here is why is this place called Ha Ha Tonka? What does that mean? So according to Ozark folklore, Ha Ha Tonka is derived from the local Osage Native American phrase thought to mean laughing waters, and it's in reference to this spring. Wow, this place is kind of amazing, isn't it? Look, oh, look, there's kind of like a little cave right here. This park is full of these boardwalks, and honestly, if these boardwalks weren't here, it would be really tricky getting around this park. And they are very well maintained, too. It just gets prettier and prettier. I try not to film people if I can, but it was really difficult today, and you probably can't tell, but this park was very, very busy, and it's very popular, and I can see why. We're here in the spring, and I can't even imagine how crowded this place is oh, in the summer. wow. Look. I don't, I think the spring is actually right down there. This spring is the 12th largest in Missouri, and it produces 48 million gallons a day. And the water is a cool 42 degrees year round, and it flows into a pond, then down into a 14 foot drop to the lake. All right, so we are walking up all of these stairs. We just got to see the spring, and now we're gonna go see what else there is to see. Oh, geez. So we made it up the steps and Greg counted them. How many steps? 218. 218. Give or take one or two. Okay, that was a killer. Whew. This is an even better view right here. You can see all the way down into the valley. Yep. Another beautiful view. They're all over the place though. Check this out. Vandals burned it in 1976. This water tower is 80 feet tall and was for the sole use of the family over at the castle. A pump powered by water pressure and gravity was used to lift the water from a spring to the tank. And that spring is nearly 300 feet away from here. something inside that structure they just housed it you know what i'm saying yeah there had to be yeah the water just didn't hang out there because there's all these windows yeah you can see like the the little holes for the joists yeah so maybe down here below i don't know that up has windows too all of our questions were answered when we found this marker and it said that the first four floors were living quarters for the estate caretaker's family and a large steel tank was on the fifth floor. I think this is the carriage house from what I read on the Missouri Parks page. The carriage house or stables was built between the castle and the water tower and it housed the caretakers and workers, 100 horses and 30 cars. No wonder this building is so big. And you can see how big it is in this picture. 
and that is the stables and in the background is the water tower that we just visited and this photograph it shows the stables but looking towards the castle okay this is behind the carriage house and wow you can see it was huge it was a big carriage house Originally, this house was named Deer's Leap because that's the name of the bluff that we're on. In 1903, Robert M. Schneider, who was a wealthy businessman in Kansas City, purchased 5,400 acres and began building a 60-room mansion. He envisioned a European-style castle with a center atrium rising three and a half stories to a skylight, nine greenhouses, a carriage house, and an 80-foot private water tower. In 1906, he purchased a Royal Tourist Automobile. This was a five-passenger, four-cylinder, 40-horsepower car. On October 27, 1906, as he was heading home from work in his new car, his driver swerved to miss a boy crossing the street. Schneider was ejected, and his head struck a pole. And this was one of the first automobile deaths in Missouri. This is the front of the building. Schneider was able to afford this luxurious home because he was a wealthy wholesale grocer as well as being into real estate and the natural gas business. I'm thinking that this was the front of the house. It just has that feel to it. I'm not 100% sure. I'll have to do some research if I can at all. Wow. Schneider had four sons, and in 1922, they decided to finish the interior of the mansion. It was completed in 1926, and I have found some photographs of the inside. The family enjoyed this property up until the late 1930s when they leased the castle out as a hotel. Then on October 21st, 1942, a fire started on the roof at 1130 in the morning, and the castle, as well as the carriage house, burned to the ground. And all that is left is what's in front of us. Wow. Oh, wow, look. You can still see some of the char from the fire on those windows up there. Wow. You know what? I bet this place was amazing back in the 30s when it was a hotel i bet it was super elegant okay what does this say oh this is mules pulling carts like this brought rock to the building site from the quarry and i think the quarry's probably down that way yep quarry trail so there's the quarry where they got all of the rock to build this castle He used a hundred stonemasons from Scotland and a foreman from England, and they quarried stone and timber from the immediate area. In all, the land and the house would end up costing $300,000. That's nearly $10 million today. Well, you can really see the burn marks right here. I wish we could go inside. What an amazing place. So I just talked to a lady up here and she said that when she was a little girl, so this is back in the early 80s, she said that you used to be able to actually go into the castle ruins and walk around. That would be amazing. I would love to do that. But I understand probably why they don't let people in there because it, it doesn't look stable. People could get hurt and the structure could get damaged. Wow, so this is very much like Bothwell Lodge just outside of Sedalia was, um, except it didn't burn. It's still there for tours and we did visit that. So 
I'll put a link at the end of this video so you can check out that because it is in the same kind of style, not the style, but the, it was a holiday house. Oh my goodness, look here. Can you go down there? Hmm. I don't know, should I do it? It is a path, it's just not a marked path. Yep, I'm doing it. I'm sure I'm not supposed to be down here, but look, we need to get some more views of this amazing castle ruins. Oh yeah. Go back over here. Oh, wow, it's just look at this lookout. I bet it's pretty sheer down there. Oh yeah, it is. Can you guys hear? Oh wow, this is beautiful. The area of Missouri that we're in right now is called Lake of the Ozarks and it was created by damming up the Osage River. It covers 54,000 acres of shorelines and it's a very popular outdoor destination. It's got camping, hunting, hiking, swimming, boating, pretty much anything that you want to do outside, you can do down here. So pretty. And then there's the house. Visiting here back in the day, it must have been so peaceful sitting on this terrace and listening to the birds chirping and the gentle sound of the spring must have been truly calming. All right, we did it. We didn't get caught and everything's fine. Except I might have lost Greg. No, I didn't. There he is. Being very patient. Well, I am really enjoying, I'm really enjoying our trip here today to Ha Ha Tonka State Park, even though it's got a funny name. So I hope that you're enjoying yourself. If you are, why don't you consider subscribing or at least hitting the like button? I will appreciate it. Yeah, you get a picture over there. That's the best view, but there are people standing there. Wow, that is a good view. And this is where we started our journey today, at the Natural Bridge. Right where Greg is, that is where the bridge, the top of the Natural Bridge is. And they used to, uh, well this used to be how you got to the castle, but they closed it in 1980. Not because it wasn't stable, but because it was just too narrow. Well, the top of the bridge is not as cool as what I thought it was going to be. Yeah, no, it's not. But I'm glad we started with the bottom of the underneath because that was impressive. Well, thanks for joining me today at Ha Ha Tonka State Park. I had a ball and I learned a whole lot and I hope you did too and as always I will see you guys next week bye now